The Antarctic lies far away from the civilized world, the sixth continent at the South Pole, one of the most beautiful places on Earth, a spectacular wilderness of snow, ice and rock, and the last large ecosystem on our planet. It is in Ushuaia, the most southerly city in the world, that we begin our expedition by cruise ship to some of the most remote locations in the Antarctic. This, the capital of an Argentine province, has become a booming city. At the end of the last century, it was a penal colony. Today, it is the popular tourist center of Tierra del Fuego. In 1869, Anglican missionaries established a humble settlement here and began to convert the local native Indians to Christianity. The harbor is situated in the center of the city. Mountains are the setting. The city is a combination of mountain village and fjord settlement. Next, we get on board ship. The luggage is loaded and the external cabins are fully stocked for two weeks. Antarctic cruisers don't exactly rough it. A journey through eternal ice is about to commence. Our ship, the MS Andrea, leaves the gateway to the White Continent. Traveling past various cargo ships lying at anchor, our route takes us through the Beagle Canal and also Drake Passage. While the lounge area is warm and comfortable, the weather outside is showing its typical character. In other words, demonstrating all four seasons in just two hours. The waters of Tierra del Fuego are the most treacherous in the world, but the cruise ships that visit the Antarctic are equipped with the most modern technology. And the crew is highly aware of all the dangers that exist here. From the South American mainland, our journey will go along the imaginary border that lies between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and towards the continent of Antarctica. Just off Deception Island, boats known as Zodiacs will take us ashore. These sturdy rubber boats transport passengers to one of the largest and most impressive crater islands in the world. To a bay where in former times whale hunters anchored. Their decayed wooden huts and rusty old canisters a reminder of bygone times. Today, penguins inhabit the southernmost blubber kitchen in the world. From 1911 to 1931, this was a hive of activity. Whaling ships came, and it was here that the whale carcasses were prepared, their fat being a rich source of engine oil. Fascinating. Now we return to the ship. The journey continues towards the South Pole through the Antarctic night. It's time for the captain's dinner. Both food and drink are first class, but it's difficult to believe that we're in such a remote place. The boat makes its way along the coastline of a land of icebergs, glaciers, and snow-covered islands. This is the coldest, driest, and most deserted continent on Earth. One of the few great untouched wildernesses. Each gangway has been prepared. Shoes must be disinfected before the Zodiac, a rubber boat developed by Jacques Cousteau, transports passengers to the shore. The first gangway leads to the top of a rocky tongue of land, Jugla Point. 
This is the home of the Gen 2 penguin that spends eight wintry months on the edge of the pack ice. The food here is plentiful. When the conditions are suitable, the penguins come on land to breed. The number of tourists permitted to visit this natural spectacle is strictly controlled. Fledgling Gen 2 penguins hatch after 39 days. It takes around three months before the young birds are able to swim. Meanwhile, they remain here in the relative safety of the land. Back to the ship. Later, the weather turns and we explore a nearby bay that is sheltered by various glaciers, a natural harbour, Port Lockroy, discovered in 1904. The ships of whale and seal hunters once also anchored here. In 1944, a British research station was founded and it's now the oldest British building in the Antarctic. In 1962, it was abandoned and became an historic site. A legendary outpost of civilization. All is so remote. Suddenly, the sun comes out. The journey through the Le Mer Channel is one of the most spectacular ship passages one could ever experience. Everything looks absolutely newly created. The channel is about 15 kilometers long and up to 100 meters wide. We watch snow-covered islands and floating icebergs. The adventurers don warm clothes in order to admire the spectacular scenery. While the captain guides the ship skillfully between ice flows, Occasionally, we encounter another ship while traveling to the southernmost point of our journey, Peterman Island. This is one of the many small islands that lies off the icy mainland and is inhabited by penguins and seagulls. Penguins are well at home here and build their nests out of small pebbles in rock walls or on the craggy shoreline. There was once a research station here with scientists spending many long months going about their work. Now we begin the most impressive leg of our adventure. A journey by Zodiac through the pack ice. A journey through Iceberg Avenue. Gleaming white icebergs pass by. Broken remnants of the eternal ice in which is stored the history of our planet. Icebergs are able to float in the oceans for up to 20 years, constantly changing both in color and form. They are sections of the Arctic mainland ice that is up to 120,000 years old. Well sheltered between huge icebergs and the immense glaciers of the high mainland mountains is Paradise Bay. As its name suggests, a place of calm and a natural harbour. We land close to the red wooden huts of the Argentinian Estación Almirante Brown. For many years it was uninhabited, but today it's operating once again. Cute Gen 2 penguins seem to enjoy the local entertainment. But soon the passengers return to the ship that is anchored in the bay.
Close by is Nico Harbour, a sheltered spot from where Nikos, Norwegian whaling ships, once began their deadly work. Thousands of Gentoo penguins nest here in the rocks and bring up their young. They return year after year. The time when millions of penguins were slaughtered here is now long gone. Since 1964, the Antarctic Ocean has been protected by animal conservation legislation. We travel further into the unknown. To Livingston Island. It's 70 kilometers long and 25 kilometers wide and has several bays. It's one of the final refuges of the macaroni penguins that live here. Measuring around 70 centimeters, they're distinguishable by their golden feathers that grow in a tuft on their heads and necks and by their strong red beak. A group of elephant seals is also to be seen here among the penguins. They pose no threat at all to their feathered compatriots. The largest of all seal varieties, the elephant seal, is at home in the maritime region of the subarctic. Following its near extinction, its population has now recovered and totals around 700,000. In spring, the bulls are the first to mark their territory on land. Then follow the pregnant females. Whales accompany the ship through the protected waters of the English Strait and to Aicho Island. We're welcomed by the island's amicable penguins. Now a protected species for many years, they have no fear of us. They look like the guardians of a lost paradise. Penguins are endothermic and have a body temperature of between 37 and 38 degrees centigrade. And a thick layer of fat protects them from hunger and cold. The Antarctic, a continent that is still in a primeval state. The Norwegian Raal Amundsen was the first to reach it on the 14th of December 1911. Some months later, he was followed by English explorer Robert Scott. We have now arrived at Elephant Island, the northernmost of the South Shetland Islands. The last bastion of the Antarctic towers majestically from amid the Antarctic Ocean. We reach the bay by Zodiac. Inhabited by penguins and seals, this island was made famous by explorer Ernest Shackleton. Shackleton arrived in these waters on his ship, the Endurance, while on a trans-Arctic expedition. But the ship became trapped by ice. However, with 28 of his men in three small boats, and after seven days of hell, he landed on Elephant Island, and was forced by the ice to travel north. Today, the perils of the Scotia Sea are well known and the captain and his crew are well used to these waters. Shackleton made his journey on a small, fragile boat that was only six meters long and covered with sailcloth. Traveling into the sunset, we cannot help but recall the adventures of those few courageous men who first came here. Finally, we're at South Georgia Island. We go ashore in the north of the island in Andrews Bay. And this time we're greeted by a group of king penguins. <laughs> 
They grow up to 95 centimeters tall, are quite slim, and weigh around 15 kilograms. Their habitat is the temperate sub-Antarctic. They number about two million and lay only a single egg that they protect between their legs for eight weeks. Young seals play without a care within the huge colony of penguins. A natural paradise on the second largest island of the Antarctic archipelago. The young penguins can be recognized by their brown feathers. They live together in groups, well guarded by their elders. There are also a number of cockalorums that can be seen mimicking their companions. Further along the northern coast, we visit Cumberland Bay. The tiny cemetery of Gritviken was the final resting place of Ernest Shackleton. He died of a heart attack while traveling to South Georgia. Also here are the rusty remains of a former whaling station. In 1906, Captain Larson came here with three ships. He was one of the first whale hunters. James Cook created one of the saddest chapters of this region's history when he reported the existence of whales and seals. So began the merciless slaughter of these wonderful creatures. However, today man understands and nature forgives. Our next port of call is Hercules Bay, Another natural paradise whose inhabitants no longer fear the approach of man. The island of South Georgia is a kind of Arctic Serengeti, a peaceful habitat for various wildlife, such as seals, penguins and seabirds. The Terra Incognita Australis is an unspoiled wilderness and its coastline is a breeding place for many colonies of wildlife. We travel through the surf and arrive at Fortuna Bay. Again, zodiacs transport those who wish to explore the bay. This is a land of seals, mammals that developed from four-footed land animals. This variety adapted to life in the sea. On land, they're somewhat clumsy, but in water are extremely agile. A footpath leads up a hill and over rough terrain that is for most of the year covered by snow and ice. From above, there's a glorious view across Stromness Bay, as seen by Shackleton when he finally reached South Georgia. A serene landscape Penguins bathe and drink in shallow pools. But as we descend, we're reminded of the ruthless whalers of times gone by. However, now penguins and baby seals live happily between the old and rusty remnants of those early days. Our ship appears in the bay and we head for our next destination. Salisbury Plain, a fine sight. Thousands of king penguins inhabit the beach and hills, along with a number of seals. In 
It's a marvellous sight, a jumble of heads and beaks that creates a pattern of white and orange. Seeing the snow-covered mountains and beaches covered with wildlife, one becomes even more aware of the amazing beauty of this region, yet also the fragile nature of the Antarctic and its wildlife. It's vital that everyone should understand the balance of nature in the Antarctic in order that this natural paradise be protected for further generations. A number of smaller islands lies just off the main island, such as Pryon Island, where a big surprise awaits us. Royal albatross and giant petrel breed on this tiny and mysterious island, well sheltered by the island's tall tussock grass. Relentless strong winds assist the first flying experiences of the young, the future wanderers of the seas. Far from world trading routes, the Arctic continent and its islands were spared the colonization of the 19th century. No other continent is as unexplored and undiscovered. And for scientists, it continues to possess many enigmas and secrets yet to be revealed. The eternal ice and dreamy, thought-provoking landscapes of the White Continent, where the ice is up to 3,000 meters thick. Now we will leave the island of South Georgia and head for the Falkland Islands on our return journey to the South American mainland. Strong seas and icy storms have always made navigation extremely precarious in this part of the world. On the southeastern ridge of the group of islands, around 500 kilometers from the South American mainland, is Sea Lion Island, one of many small islands in the area. As its name suggests, it's mainly inhabited by the sea lion, a variety of seal that is to be found on the Falkland Islands and on the South American coastline. The bulls and their harems lie lazily on the beach and exchange caresses. Various varieties of bird have found a safe home on this remote island. All these creatures take their food from the sea. This, the last almost untouched ecosystem on our planet, is also gradually but very slowly, entering the 21st century. Stanley, capital of the island. And 700 islands of which 29 are inhabited. Most of its 1600 population live here, a far-flung outpost of the former British Empire. In 1843, Stanley became the seat of the governor of the British Crown. There's a sheltered harbour, a main street, as well as a cathedral and a landmark made of whalebone. Over the centuries, whale hunting was the island's main source of income. And prior to the opening of the Panama Canal, thousands of ships anchored here before navigating around the dangerous Cape Horn while on their way to the Pacific Ocean. Passengers are still mesmerized by the spell of the Arctic Circle, by its wildlife, its unique beauty and dramatic landscapes. The ship approaches Ushuaia Harbor the grand adventure comes to an end. Long live Antarctica!